guys, May Flom here, and just want to show you quick and easy scrapbook layout background. So what I have here, 12 by 12 cardstock, and I went and machine stitched three times around. I made just my thumbnail, I just made a few little marks where I wanted the absolute minimum size to be. Okay, so that way, what will fit in here is approximately eight and a half by six and a half. In other words, two four by six photos with a mat or maybe a couple more photos if it's cropped down but my photos will fit inside here and sometimes i like to make my own background and layer it up with a bunch of different mediums and such before i put my photos and stuff down so here i have a prima stencil love this beautiful stencil floral stencil and i am going to use some pink paint to do this. You could do anything you wanted. Um, I'm just going to try a little pink paint and see, compared to the background, which is also pink, see what happens here. And it really doesn't show up, but that's okay. It's barely showing up. I'm going to be okay with that because it is really going to, because I'm using the paint, it's going to just add a little texture. And you'll notice that I'm not doing the whole stencil. I'm just kind of doing a little design loop around where my stitching is. So it is going to kind of just look like a little a little blobby for lack of a technical term here, uh, but it is going to add a nice little bit of texture to our project. And I'm hitting this with a heat tool while I simultaneously shake up some gold mist here to add a little more uh, detail here to our project. And gold mist, I'm just going to open it up like I do and flick a little bit around the edge. What I love about building my own backgrounds like this is that I can go wild with colors, with textures, with whatever, and I don't have to worry about messing up my photos. I don't have to worry about anything getting harmed or you know, in any way getting colored by all the colorful mediums that I'm using. With some wild orchid paint and the same stencil, I went and repeated with the darker color and that pops out a little more. I still wanna add some contrast and I was gonna go with black, except that I do have the black stitching. So I decided to go with white and I have this great Prima stamp. It's got all these squiggly lines and splatters and everything. And I'm using white Simon Says Stamp Pigment Ink here. And this would work with paint, with ink, whatever it is that you've got. And I'm just gonna kind of do a couple different angles here. I'm also going to take this off the block and just re-ink certain parts of the stamp. I love this white ink pad from Simon Says Stamp. It's really, really great. I just get such good color from it. And then I'll do the same with the other side of the stamp. And I think I'll put it this way here. I just want to add just a few little spots here. Now, um, a tip about this particular ink pad, it does actually work really well to sprinkle embossing powder on the ink and then shake off the excess and emboss it. In this case, I wanna speed things along, so I'm just gonna heat set it so that it's dry. And just like that, in those few minutes, we have got a background here that is ready for photos and journaling and a title and we'll have ourselves a lovely mixed media scrapbooking layout. I hope you have enjoyed these tips. If you're interested in seeing the full finished layout or more about scrapbooking, be sure to check out my classes at craftwithmay.com. I'll see you next time.